here I have a piece of aluminum that I've cut out. It's an eighth of an inch thick, and that will be my finish size, but on the profile, I'll be using this Harbor Freight mill to cut it down to the shape and size that I need. The finished size of uh, the oval, which this will turn into, will be 25.4 millimeters, or one inch in this direction, and then 35 millimeters in that direction. So first, I'm going to um, use the end mill here to create that finish size, drill some holes, and then create the oval blast. Now, I've just cut this off with a hacksaw, and they're sharp burrs, not too sharp on aluminum, but they do stick up, and they can interfere with the jaws and make things not sit flat. So it's important to take a file to these edges and make sure that all the burrs are down and won't interfere with how your part sits. With all of the burrs removed, we're ready to put it into the vise. Now, I'm going to be cutting off one side and flipping it over and cutting off the other to make sure that both sides are flat and um, parallel. Normally it wouldn't really matter which side you start with, but in this case I have a machined, or at least partially machined edge on this side, so it'll be a little bit flatter than the rough cut of the hacksaw. So I'm gonna put my flatter side down in the vise, and I have these two parallels here. I'm going to be setting my aluminum on the parallel, but because it's about the same thickness, they're both an eighth of an inch. If I try to clamp on it, then this doesn't clamp because it's just putting all the pressure on a parallel. I can solve that uh, by using my other parallel and putting it in between my work and the adjustable jaw. Now whenever I tighten it, my um, jaws are tightening on my work and the parallel down here is loose. So I know that all the pressure is on my work. Next I'm going to seat my part, make sure that it is indeed sitting on the parallel. You can see that now the parallel is loose underneath and that means our part might not be sitting perfectly on the parallel. If you just take a mallet or something, it won't dent your material. This is wooden. And just lightly pat it down. Now the parallel under there is tight, which means our part is sitting on it. This isn't real critical when we're cutting our first side because we don't have to really make anything parallel until we do our finish on the other side. But now our part is properly secured and seated and we're ready to take a cut. I'm using a quarter inch carbide end mill to face this part, uh, this side of my part. And if I bring the Z down until I am almost touching it, you can see that it's just about centered on my part. If you're doing it like this, that is the way you want it. If it's off center, then you might not cut all the way. So best just to keep it in the center. And once you have it there, you can lock it in place. So this lever down here, I pull this up, now it locks the wheel. Um, and I'll move this actually anywhere over my part and I will turn on the spindle, come down and touch to locate and then bring it off and take a pass. Now, we just touched on the surface, our, surface of our part. We know where the top of it is. We can just feed down a little bit um, right here with our fine adjustment knob and take a pass over. If the first pass doesn't clear off all the rough saw marks, we can keep taking passes until we have a clean finish.
forgot to lock my Z first time I took a pass, and so I have this divot here. But it won't be a problem because I'll be taking all of this corner material off when I radius the edge anyway. But this part is flat, so I'm just going to turn this over and now do the other side of my part. This time I'm going to lock my Z first. Um, and I even have this in place to keep it from moving down anymore. And we're going to take my next cut up here. Now I'm going to move down another 10 thousandths. We did not take any material off except there at the very end. So move this out of the way and then unlock my Z. Move it down another 10 thousandths. Lock this in place again, and I always like to put this stopper back in place because sometimes it likes to go down anyway. And another pass. Right now it's about 26.9, and we want to be 25.4, so we can still take off some more material. And I'm just going to put this back in the vise with this side up so that I can take a little bit more of that divot out if I can. Um, it's always a good idea to take out your parallels and clean out the inside of your vise because chips can get in there and chips on your parallels will make things not parallel. So clean out your vise. Now that we have a good clean surface on the bottom of this, it's even more important that you seat your part and make it parallel. And when the parallel on the bottom is not moving, that's a good indicator that it is seated properly. Now I haven't changed my Z position at all since the last cut we took. And because we put our part seated on the same parallel, the bottom of our tool should still be in line with the top of our part. And if we come over here, it does seem that we are just at the top of our part. With this bar out of the way, we can loosen up the Z, take this down. Um, this time I'm gonna go 20 thousandths at a time until we get the millimeter and a half off that we need. It's also 60 thousandths about. So 20 thousandths down, lock my Z, and bring the stopper back up, and I'll take another pass. to leave 10 thousandths for a finish pass. So I'm only gonna take 10 thousandths this time also. After the finishing cut, you can see that we are pretty close to the 25.4 that we were shooting for. So the next thing, after deburring this edge, I'm going to face this edge and this edge, make sure they're smooth and perpendicular to this edge and perpendicular to that face. Next to face this end off, um, I have it laying down on two parallels in here. That will cause this to be parallel to the vise in this direction, which makes it perpendicular to this side. And because this vise jaw is perpendicular to the table, um, it should make it perpendicular, the side perpendicular to the sides that are touching the vice jaws. So everything should be squared up, but first it's important that we seat it. Um, if I had taller parallels, I might put it on them, but for this I need this piece of wood to get in there. So I'm just going to seat it um, until these parallels stop moving. Now on the other side of my vise, I have my tap wrench that's disassembled. The reason it's here is because these are ground down to um, one, uh, one half of an inch, each of these, pretty precisely. And because this part is one inch wide, and together these are one inch wide, it stabilizes the vise. 
my adjustable jaw, if these weren't in here, they can, they can wobble back quite a lot, back and forth. So if there's only pressure on this side of the jaw, the whole thing will angle in that direction and will give me a really bad grip just on this corner. Now, whenever we're taking our pass along this edge, we'll be using this knob, which we had locked at the beginning. So I'm just gonna unlock that, and now this moves freely. This time, we're going to have our x-axis knob locked whenever we're cutting. Now I've set the z as low as it can go, so we're gonna be using the side, the edge of the end mill, to cut our face right here. I'm going to take the end mill all the way to the front of our part because our first cut is going to be a conventional cut. Um, it has to do with the direction the cutter is rotating versus the direction you're traveling. So if we're cutting um, the right side of our part and we're using a right-handed tool, we're going to need to be traveling that direction to conventional cut. It is easier on the machine and since this machine isn't too stable, it really helps. Anyway, I'm going to, um, with my Z locked, I'm going to turn on the machine, just barely touch on my edge here, um, bring this back, feed in a little bit, lock it, and then take a cut across. To lock my X, I just pull up on this lever here, and now this is locked. There's a little bit of flashback, but it won't move. My finishing pass, I'm going to come back along, making it a climb cut. And you can do climb cutting on here since this is aluminum, it's soft, and if I only take a couple thousandths off, it should leave a better finish than a conventional cut and shouldn't cause too much of a problem with stability. So unlocking my X, I'm going to move it a couple thousandths, lock it back again, and come back and climb my part. With this edge cleaned up and now deburred, I'm going to flip it over and cut my other side the same way I cut the first one. I'm not worried about sizing yet. As soon as I have two machine surfaces, then I can measure and cut it to size. My length on my part is about 1.8 millimeters oversized. And if I multiply that by 39 thousandths, that should give me the inches I need to travel. So that's about 70 thousandths of an inch to take off my part and it should be to size. In order to feed in 70 thousandths on my part, I'm just going to, after I turn on the machine, feed in until I can hear and see it touch and then bring my part back, feed in 70 thousandths over a couple of passes um, and then it should be to my finish size. So I saw it um, take off material there I can rotate this until that is at zero. And I'm actually going to test that again, make sure. And it looks like I touched at zero again. So I know that my face is zeroed off. I'm gonna go ahead and take off 70 thousandths. Here we're about 0.1 millimeters off. That's good enough for what I'm doing. And on the other side, we're good. And that is how you square a piece of flat stock on all four sides. You should get it pretty parallel and perpendicular and you'll be ready to do any other secondary operations like drilling or other milling and slotting. Thanks for watching.